Lake Okeechobee because it's a great natural source. From Publix, Pepper <laughs> Hills. Uh, Everglades? Actually, we get it from the uh, aqueduct, or not the aqueduct, the, the aqueduct. aquifer that aqueduct. goes underneath Florida. It's not very complicated in, in terms of uh, understanding that our water comes from underneath the Everglades. Uh, the Biscayne Aquifer is recharged when we have water in the Everglades, in those water conservation areas and in Everglades National Park. It's a surficial aquifer system that extends all the way down to the base of the aquifer, which in some areas, it might only be 50 feet deep, but as you get closer to the East Coast, it gets well over 100 feet deep. It's uh, bounded underneath um, by less pervious rock. So that allows some layer of our geology to hold water. That containment's provided by the bottom. Uh, it usually has some boundary area, which is the recharge zone for that aquifer. But it's, it's fundamentally rock or soil that holds water to some degree. And uh, in this case, we understand that it's roughly the, the bounds of the Everglades protection area. And that provides us uh, with our water supply from Miami-Dade County, the Florida Keys, so Monroe County also, uh, as well as Broward and areas of Southern Palm Beach County. We all get our water supply from the Biscayne Aquifer. Well, we're the Water and Sewer Department and our responsibility is to provide clean, aesthetically pleasing, safe drinking water to the nearly 2.8 million people in this county and wastewater services as well. We're incredibly fortunate in this county and all of South Florida. The Biscayne Aquifer is almost a perfect water source as you could ever hope to have. Uh, the Biscayne Aquifer resides about 100 feet below the surface of the ground in a limestone formation. Uh, the water is, as I said, a wonderful quality. We extract that water from the aquifer and then we soften it. And what that means is we just remove some of that hardness. We take the water and we combine it with lime and lime elevates the pH of the water. And when the pH of the water reaches, say, 10, then the lime, the hardness, primary calcium carbonate, the lime raises it up, the calcium carbonate comes out of solution and precipitates out. We take the water off the top and it doesn't have the hardness or as much hardness. So we soften the water, we filter it, we add disinfectant to it to protect it against any introduction of bacteria or any pathogen, and then we pump it out to the homes and, and provide it for everyone to use. The largest threats are um, associated with over drying of the Everglades, not providing it with enough water. Um, the flood control system along the Lower East Coast requires us to maintain canal stages that are uh, low enough to allow people to live without concerns of flooding. But what that's done uh, with reduced flows through the Everglades and lowering canal stages over that period of time, it's allowed saltwater to intrude into the aquifer. And this occurs as sort of a wedge that dives underneath the coastal freshwater areas of that aquifer because the coastal saltwater is more dense. And it's important to note that when you're driving over a canal, uh, the water level is the water table. The, the water levels that you see in those canals because of the very transmissive geology. Uh, that's the water table and that's also the aquifer here. We've seen over the past decades, we've seen the salt water move inland. We monitor a salt water interface line that we partnership with the United States Geological Survey and we monitor where that salt water line is. Now Miami-Dade County, out of an abundance of caution, moved its withdrawal wells far inland. So we're miles from the coast, we're, we're closer into the Everglades to where we actually extract our water. So the salt water intrusion is not a factor for where you get water for many, many decades to come. It's important for people to understand where their water comes from, no matter where you live, uh, because you're more likely to protect that source. Uh, it would be much more expensive 
for us to uh, find alternative water supplies, whether it's through bottled water or whether it's through desalination. Uh, we have a very cheap and easy access water supply. Uh, it's just a matter of taking care of it. And we think understanding that adds value in terms of protecting a, a vital resource, uh, but also making that connection with Everglades restoration is of obvious importance as well to those of us who live here.